Peace everyone, Unmaskart here, and welcome back to Peaceful Pastels. I hope you are having a wonderful day. In today's episode, we are going to be creating a beautiful landscape with some mountains, trees, and water. The colors we'll be using today are from the Season 1 Starter Pack. You can get your starter pack using the link in the description. So before we begin, I want to quickly share the viewer submission from the previous episode. Fantastic work, Christian. It came out really nice. Keep up the good work. And remember, if you want a chance to be featured in the next episode, be sure to tag your work with the hashtag Peaceful Pastels. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started on today's project. Okay, so the first color we're going to be using in today's episode is our trusty powder blue, and we're going to be creating our sky first. So we're going to come about halfway down the paper and then we're just going to fill in the top. So very similar to how we've started the two previous projects. Just going to be creating a nice simple sky for our mountains to sit on. By this point you should be quite comfortable creating skies if you've done the two previous projects. And if you haven't done the two previous projects, I certainly recommend starting with those if you are just starting off with pastels for the first time. With each project in this season, we'll slowly add more features to our landscapes and they'll get slightly more complicated in each episode. A nice generous amount of your powder blue on. Just like that. And we're gonna switch to our cyan color now. And we're just gonna add just gonna add a little bit of this up in the top, just a little bit. I'm gonna do it mainly on the left side here, just a little bit, just kind of scribble it in there. Just like that. Remember to keep your lines horizontal so that when they blend out, if they don't blend out perfectly smooth, they'll still end up looking a little bit like clouds. So you always wanna keep your lines relatively horizontal. Now I'm just going to grab the white and put in a little bit of white down here just to lighten the horizon. So just scraping a little bit of white down here, maybe a little bit up in the in the middle part. And you can even you can even just kind of scribble a few lines up there if you want some clouds. I'll just put a few little clouds up there, I guess. Just like that, nothing too complex. Just a generous amount of white down here at the bottom. And we're ready to move on to blending out the sky. So I'm just gonna grab my blender here. I'm gonna start in the lightest part of the sky and then slowly, my, slowly I'm gonna work my way up to the darker colors. And you don't have to use a lot of pressure here. As I've mentioned before, the sponges that come with this pack of uh, blenders should last you a very, very long time. And if you notice your sponge kind of getting a little crumbly or falling apart at all, it is just because you're applying too much pressure No need to apply really any pressure at all. The pastels are more than willing to be blended. They move along the paper quite easily. So you really don't have to press hard at all. And if you feel like you're getting streaks in the sky that you don't want, then that just means you need to apply a little bit more pastel for your second layer. I kind of applied quite a generous amount of my powder blue 
So I don't think I'm going to need a second layer in my sky. You can see where I scribbled that white, where it just kind of, you know, blending it out just kind of creates soft, faded clouds. And you could even go and apply a little bit more white to those clouds and just bring out a few details in them if you want. I'm going to leave mine just kind of faded into the background. So they're just going to kind of float there like ghost clouds. I'm just going to blend out this where we applied some of the cyan. Just try to smooth out those lines that I created. And like I said, even if you don't get those lines perfectly blended out, as long as you've moved them horizontal, they're just going to kind of create a little bit of an illusion of clouds. But if you want your sky to be perfectly smooth, then you're just going to need to apply a couple extra layers of your pastel and blend them out. So you're going to have to do the first two steps, maybe uh, two, three times, four times at the most, I, I would say, and you'll get a really nice smooth sky. In this case, I kind of like a little bit of the texture that's showing up. So I'm going to keep that. And then I'm going to move on to the mountains. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to add some nice mountains into our scene here. Be sure when you're blending to make full strokes all the way across the paper to get nice consistent blending. There we go. Now let's add some mountains. Okay, so to start our mountains, we're going to be using the cool gray number six, and we're going to make them kind of sharp and pointy. So let's just start something like this. And we're just going to do kind of a really tall triangle to keep this simple. Really sharp, tall triangle. Let's just go all the way down past the horizon somewhere, somewhere around there. And now we want to give our mountain a little bit of character. So we're just going to break off and do another little triangle like this. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. We're going to extend, we're going to widen our, our mountain a little bit, create another little triangle like this. Maybe a small little triangle peeking out right there and perhaps another Another triangle right here. It's a very, very simple shape, right? Anybody can draw a triangle. We're just gonna, just gonna kind of come across the sky, creating our peaks on our mountains. And let's say, let's have another larger mountain right in here. So I'm just gonna create a nice triangle right in there. There we go. Maybe uh, another tall one right here. And then let's go, let's go a little bit wider, a little bit wider, shallower triangle. Some variation on our mountains, something like that. Let's add some details. So a few little smaller triangles widen the base of our mountain, just add a few extra small details in there and then we just want to connect our mountains so let's just go ahead and connect those and let's say uh, let's put these mountains a little bit further in the back so we'll for reference we'll, we'll have another kind of mountain kind of coming into the front here and maybe one right here and just kind of coming down over there so what we're going to do is we're just going to fill in our triangles now with this gray. Try to keep that top edge as sharp as you can. And make, a, make some variation to the mountains. Just kind of scribble right along the edge there. Give them just a little bit of extra texture, a little bit extra detail. You don't want to have perfect triangular mountains. 
want to have just a random variation. I'm just going to fill that in, fill all the mountains in, just like that. Complex. There we go. We'll just bring that mountain off to the side like that. Fill it in. You just want to come down the page a little bit, kind of to the base of the mountains there. And now we're just going to blend that gray out. So I'm going to grab my blender again, and I'm just going to start over here. And I'm just going to the the goal here is to get up to that edge where the mountain meets the sky and just pull that gray down. Just pull it straight down into the paper and let it, let it just kind of fade, fade into the paper. You want to keep the edge, top edge of your mountain as sharp as you can against the sky. Preserve as much of the detail there as you can. And just blend that gray right into the paper. Pull it right down. There we go. All right, now it's time to add a little bit of detail to our mountains using our other colors. Okay, so what we want to do here is create the shadow side of the mountain. So think of the mountains as kind of being a pyramid shape and we're going to do kind of the left face. And so we're going to use our cyan color to do this. And to start, we're just going to kind of draw somewhat of a zigzag, a random zigzag, and you can make it whatever zigzag shape you want. We're going to find each peak, each little peak and just kind of draw a little zigzag down. Random, random zigzag. And on the left side of that zigzag, we're just going to take our blue, kind of scrape some details in there. And you want to go down kind of at a 45 degree angle, pretty much the same direction of the slope of the mountain. So however steep you make the peak of your mountain, you kind of want to just move that blue down in that direction. So we have another little peak right here, so a little zigzag. A little bit of blue, a little bit of cyan right there, down this peak, just scribble in a little bit of blue and come down a little bit further. Now remember, we added mountains here in the front, so I'm going to find a peak right here, a little zigzag, a little bit of blue, and we added another one here, so another zigzag, a little bit of blue, a bit there, and a bit right there. And now we're going to do the mountains that are behind it. So find a peak, zigzag, and then some streaks of blue. Same thing right here, the tall bit. Zigzag, a little bit of blue. And that's going to be the shadow side of our mountains here. Just like that. Now we're going to move on to the highlighted side, and to do that we are going to use white to give it some snow. And essentially we don't have to do the zigzag anymore, we just have to do the right side. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the cyan with the white, but instead of the left side we're going to do the right side. So we're just going to follow that zigzag 
kind of create a little bit of texture on the other side where we made those zigzags. Just like that. Everywhere we put the blue, we're just going to add a little bit of white on the opposite side of our mountain. And we're gonna add one more color before we blend this out. So before we blend anything, we're gonna add a little bit of burnt sienna to our mountains, just to give it a little bit of color variation when we blend it out. So we're just gonna put a few little dots of this on the white side of our mountains. So just a few little dashes breaking up the, the white, giving the mountain just a little bit more texture, a little bit more detail. There we go. And now we're ready to blend them out. Okay, so when you blend these mountains out, you want to blend in the direction that you applied the color. So on the left side, we're gonna kind of blend down from the top right to the bottom left, and then opposite on the right side of the mountain. And then the other thing you want to keep in mind is that near the top of the mountain, you want the colors to be less blended. You want to have a little bit more graininess, a little bit more texture. So I'm just going to drag the blue down towards the left. And as I get towards the bottom of the mountain, I'll blend it a little bit more. And then on the white side, I'll blend from the top left going down diagonally to the bottom right like that and if, as I get to the, the bottom I'll just kind of blend it out more. So something like that. And you'll just do this for each little mountain and then what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of our powder blue at the bottom to create some nice mist at the bottom of the mountain. There we go, almost done. Just a few little mountains left to do. And then I'm gonna grab the powder blue and just add a bunch of powder blue to the bottom of the page. Because so we're, gonna, we're gonna add some water to our scene here. So I'm gonna grab the powder blue and I'm just gonna kind of scribble up the mountains a little bit right at the base, just a little bit of that powder blue, something like that. There we go. And I'll just add powder blue to the bottom of the page for the water that we'll create later on. There's our powder blue. I'm gonna grab the cyan really quick as well, just to darken a little bit around the bottom edge, kind of like this. That will come into play more with our water. There's just a little bit of cyan down there. 
There we go. And I'm gonna grab the blender now, and I'm just gonna smooth out all of this around the mountain, all of that blue to kind of create that mist. There we go, now we have some nice misty mountains. And the next thing we're gonna do is add a couple tree lines to separate the, the land from the mountains. So we're gonna add some distant trees and that's gonna be the next part of this project. All right, there we go. Let's add some trees now. All right, everyone, I hope you are enjoying the project so far. I just wanna remind you that if you are interested in learning more from me, that I have a Patreon page where I live stream new pastel tutorials every single Tuesday. So I already have a huge library of over 100 pastel tutorials over there. You get access to all of them immediately as soon as you sign up, and that's for only $5 a month. So I hope to see you in one of the live streams soon, but for now, let's go ahead and get back to our project. Okay, so for our trees, we're going to be using our cool gray number six again. And what we're going to do is all the way across the paper, we're just gonna draw short vertical lines. So here I'll work right in the center. I'll just draw one vertical line to see what, so you see what I mean. And you're just gonna keep drawing vertical lines right next to each other at varying heights. So you want variation in the height, something like that. And you can work bottom up or top down, however, I find it a little bit easier to taper off if you start at the bottom and you kind of flick the pastel up just like real quickly. It allows you to just create a little bit more variation, a bit more randomness in the height of your trees. And let's just put a little hill over here so the trees will start to go up a bit higher right over here. And we'll just continue to work our way across the paper. Now it's okay if there's some gaps in between, that's fine. You don't have to fill those in. The important part is to just keep your trees kind of varying in height. Try to avoid any pattern. That's, that's the tricky part. The tricky part is avoiding patterns. The, the more pattern you create, the less realistic your trees will look. So try your best to avoid any patterns. All right, so there's our first row of trees. So what we're gonna do is just grab our blender and we're just going to, not all the way at the top, kind of similar to how we treated the, the mountains. You know, the top part of the mountain, we don't really blend all that much. And then as we get to the bottom, we just kind of blur it all out. So that's the same thing we're gonna do. So kind of right, right in the middle of your trees, you're just gonna kind of pull down with your little blender. And that's gonna fade the trees into that powder blue that we applied. But you want the top part of your tree to be nice and dark. So keep, leave that part unblended and just kind of blend the bottom part. Just give it a nice little pull down into the powder blue. Just like this. And just do that all the way across your tree line. That will fill in those gaps that you might have created by accident in between your trees. So there's your first tree line. I'm just gonna softly blend the bottom where we pulled that cool gray into our powder blue. So just blend that, smooth it out. And we're ready for our second 
tree line. So we're going to add trees in front of these trees. And so we're going to use the same exact color, the cool gray, number six. And we're going to do the same exact technique, but we're just going to work down the page a little bit. So now I'm going to put my trees here. And I think for this tree line, I'm just going to do kind of the middle part. So I'm going to stop like right here. And then I'll, I'll go all the way over here. So I'm not going to work these trees over the entire page. something like that and then once again same blending method you're gonna pull the center of those trees down into the powder blue and the next thing we do is just gonna add some grass and we'll leave the water and then we'll do we'll do some details on the water as well which will be a lot of fun so just pull that tree line down and then soften that bottom part and there we go we have nice nice little tree line at the foot of our mountains and the next thing we're going to do is just add some some grass and then our little pond so the base color of our grass is going to be the olive color so i'm just going to take the olive color and at the foot of our trees here I'm just going to start coloring in where I want the grass to be. I'm going to bring it up kind of like this. And where I'm not adding the grass down here is where the pond's going to be. So over here, I think the, the ground is going to kind of come up to the trees like this. And then behind it, I'll let that part be water as well. So I'll just add the grass with this olive color up here to these trees. Continue my grass over here. Just like that. And so everything else that's blue down here is just going to be water. Now if I add any other colors, I'm just going to take my blender really quick and smooth out that olive color let it just kind of blend into the trees there even let it blend into the water a little bit just like that Now I'm going to add some highlights to my grass and to do that we're going to use the leaf green so just at the few little spots in that olive green I'm just going to add some of this leaf green just to give it some nice color variation. And then right at the base of the water, I'm going to use some of our burnt sienna just to darken the, say it's like mud, you know, where the water's touching the ground and it's just a little bit darker there. So just around the water edge, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna. And again, just go back to my blending sponge, just 
smooth it out a tiny bit. I want to leave a little bit of texture in there, but for the most part, just kind of smooth it out. Just like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add the reflection of the land into the water. It's really, really easy. So let's uh, grab our blender one more time and we'll do that. All right, so to add the reflection of the land, simply just gonna take our blending knife, we're just gonna put it right there on the water's edge and we're just going to pull it down, just kind of like that. Just pull it right into the water, all the way around the edge, very, very lightly. You don't have to put a lot of pressure here. So you just kind of pull it straight down into the water, just like that. right along the edge. Simple as that. There you go. That's how you add some nice reflection of the ground. If you wanted to add some of the tree in there, simply take some of that cool gray and just add some trees, some vertical lines in there that you want to show up. Probably not have any there. So a little bit of that cool gray, and then just pull that cool gray right in there, like that. I have a few, a few of those trees, those taller trees showing up in the water, just a little bit. And then what you want to do is you want to take your white, and on the sharpest edge that you have there, just kind of add a few little ripples right along, right at the bottom edge of that burnt sienna that we added to the water line there. So just a little bit of white, breaking up some of those darker colors. Just like that, right along that water edge. And now I'm going to show you how to add some nice little flowers into the grass. So we're going to do that next. So I'm going to be using the zinc yellow and my crafting knife to create the little flowers. And it's a very simple and fun technique. You simply just take your pastel, your knife, and you just very, very gently scrape off little bits of your pastel right into the grass right into the grass, just very, very gently. Try not to overdo it. Sometimes you just put a little bit too much, so do it sparingly. No need to do it too much. Just a little bit of that yellow there. And now we have some nice flowers on our, small little flowers on our grass there. So now our grass doesn't look too plain. And you can use your other colors. You can use a little bit of the, the lavender if you want, the pure lavender. I'm going to put a few, a few lavender flowers there as well. I like lavender. Just scrape a little bit of it right into the grass. And you're probably wondering at this point, well, how's it, how's it going to stay? Well, I'm going to show you that right now. So if you've gotten the starter pack, then you have the Clairefontaine pastel mat in the blocked pad, the gummed pad, and it comes with sheets of glassine paper between each, each sheet of the pastel mat. And so what you do is you just lay your glassine paper right over your project and then just gently press right right over the grass, right where you added those little speckles. You just very gently rub your finger across that. Conveniently, you can see right through the glassine paper, so that's helpful. And then for any of the other speckles that you didn't want 
to be pressed in, like I have a couple on the water here, you can simply just blow those away very gently. Uh, and since you didn't press them into the paper, they're not sticking there. And then the last thing to do is just to give our water a little bit of highlights. So I'm just gonna take the white and just give it a little bit of highlights, a little bit of sparkles. So a few little white dots. I like to put sparkles in my water. There we go, just like that. All right, everyone, here we are, our finished painting. I hope you enjoyed following along on this project. I would love to see what your landscape looks like. So when you share it on social media, be sure to tag it with hashtag peaceful pastels, and I'll choose one to be presented in the next episode. Thank you all again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and a share for me, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.